What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode. This is episode number 95 and we start today's episode off with some player training where you see Pellegrini has now hit 80 overall so really good to see there for our backup left back and also Ricardo Orsolini coming to me and saying cheers for all the first team football I'm getting. I'll be doing my best boss and I said I'm proud to see you working hard and I look forward to seeing more from you out there because Orsolini this season has been absolutely fantastic and I couldn't start the episode off without shouting Ricardo out. Three goals and six assists in 13 Serie A games. He's also chipped in with a couple of goals and assists in our five Champions League group games as well. He he has been absolutely fantastic. He's grown a rating. He's now 85 overall. His agility is now 98. So he's won away from having maximum agility. And that does not surprise me. This guy, I mean, this guy could turn out of a paper bag. What's the phrase people use? He can maneuver out of a paper bag or something. But anyway, he's been amazing. And um, yeah, also this season has been one, I'd say one of our best players, if not our second best player actually, behind Ivan Tony. He's, he's been really, really good and had to shout him out today. And of course, he scored the goal this season so far as well with absolute cracker against Sassuolo a few days ago. Still, first game of today's episode as we take on Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge. Yes, I'm back in England for the first time since leaving to Rome and taking on Frank Lampard's side away in West London. Looking forward to this course, as we know, Chelsea were our rivals with Sheffield United in the four years we were there. So it was only fitting, really, that when the groups were drawn. You guys said it in the comments, of course you get drawn against Chelsea. And as we know, heading to the game after our win on match day five against Lokomotiv Moscow, we'd already qualified for the knockout stages with a game to spare. And us heading to this game, we had to win tonight in order to top the group. Otherwise, a draw or a defeat would mean we'd finish second with Chelsea finishing top and we started the game off well Shorich who scored in match day 5 almost got his second goal there smacking the crossbar as the shot went behind for a goal kick but with 12 minutes to go in the half Chelsea would get in front and the guy that got the goal Lautaro Martinez doesn't matter where we are doesn't matter what team I'm managing I just know when this guy's on the pitch he's got it in for me I swear he's got it in for me he and Hyung Min Son they just hate me Five goals in the Champions League for the Argentine this season. That's why Chelsea right now are top of the group and surely with 45 minutes to go in the game at half-time on course to top the group and finish as group winners. So Chelsea won, Roma nil, And it was a shame as well because we were playing some really good football in this game too. Some really nice moves. Kepa made a great save here to keep Chelsea in front 12 minutes after the restart to deny Zaniolo. But, you know, our football was really good. We had made seven changes to our lineup heading into the game. But we were making some really nice moves out there. Pina Monti showing he's learnt a few things from Ivan Tony. Nice little dummy there, but careful with the save. Keeps it at 1-0. And as Chelsea was seeing out the game, still leading, we had one final chance to get a point right at the death. Wouldn't have mattered, of course, because we knew we had to win this game to finish as group winners. But a nice little build-up here saw Cristante play a 1-2 of Pina Monti. Lovely through ball by Andrea. Cristante rolls it across the face of the six-yard area. And who's there to turn it in at the far post? It's Shoric, the Croatian. I was kind of annoyed that celebrations got cut short here. But yeah, Shoric gets on the end of it. And that's two goals in two Champions League games for our Croatian cam. You know, I must say, at the start of the season, I talked about it. I was considering selling him. I'm glad I've kept him here. Two goals in two games for Shorich. A bit of a meaningless goal, really, because whilst it did prevent the loss, which is nice to see, we needed to win tonight in order to top the group. So the draw means nothing, really. It's it's a bit of a meaningless draw. It's You know, for, for our mentality, it's good, because it means that we extend our unbeaten run in all competitions. I've only lost one, goal, uh, one game since we joined Roma, and that was back in match day two away against Bologna, and it means we finished the group undefeated as well, but in the grand scheme of things it doesn't really mean anything nice to see it but of course it does mean we have to win the game to top the group and therefore we do finish in second place so that's the final look at the group then Chelsea top it with 14 points and we finish in second nice that we did finish undefeated though with Sevilla in third and poor old locomotive Moscow finishing with the wooden spoon and zero points in fourth and as you take a look at the groups and who did what throughout the Champions League group stage uh, three of the four Italian teams are qualified we're of course one of them us Juventus and Milan made it through but Inter poor old Inter they had a group of death alongside Paris Saint-Germain, Bayern Munich and Shakhtar Donetsk. They couldn't make it through. And as for the Blades as well, as we predicted, it's a third place finish for Sheffield United in Group H. They are out of the Champions League in the group stage and they'll be going into the Europa League. But fingers crossed, I'll keep my eye on it. Hopefully, they'll be able to win the Europa League and retain it after they won it last year and qualify for the Champions League once again. Touch wood, that'll happen. But uh, still, for our second of three games today, back home, back at the Stadio Olympico and back to 
Serie A duties as we take on Cagliari here at home. And of course, heading into this game, our last league game was the win of the series. Uh, sorry, the win of the season even so far. No doubt about it. My best win since I'm arriving as Roma manager. The 3-0 victory away at San Siro against the league leaders into Milan to inflict their first defeat on them this season. Now heading back home against Cagliari. As we said before, if we are to catch up to Inter and the boys ahead of us in the league right now, they, Juventus and Milan, we need to make sure we win all of our games, especially the home games as well. And heading into the game, we had the first chance. Calabria going on a storming run down the right-hand side. Our right wing back there, lovely aggressive run. Reminiscent of Wally Shaw down the other side of the pitch there. Plays it across the edge of the, uh, edge of the six yard area. And just like a goal against Chelsea, across the six yard area at the back post, someone's arriving. It's Moise Keane. And Keane makes it 1 0 to Roma. Or Cellini almost got another goal here right before the break because we were still leading by one, but struck that shot just wide of the post. And it was a really bizarre game as well because Cagliari were absolutely dominating possession and doing so well with it. But on a snowy turf, they were making risks. They were taking risks in this game as well. Why on earth they played that ball back to the centre back there on a snowy, bobbly, hard, frozen turf, I don't know. Because any error with a first touch and Moise Keane was going to intercept. That's exactly what happened. Keane intercepts, runs the length of the half, smacks it past the goalkeeper for his second goal of the game and ensures that he bags his brace and the three points are in the bag. So it was a, a very it was a very ironic goal, really, I suppose, because, again, Cagliari were knocking the ball around so nicely, and then for the second goal, it was a careless pass that gave us the goal. It was really ironic, but, yeah, two to the final score. Moise bags a brace in this game, for, so uh, no, none for Ivan in his pursuit of the golden boot, but most important thing is the three points. As we know, you see there by the results, Milan and Juventus both winning. We can't afford slip-ups, man. We're still in fourth place. We're still quite a few points behind league leaders. The only way we're going to win this title is if we win all of our remaining home games especially in the Serie A this season but following the game as you can hear in the background the Champions League theme song the draw for the last 16 of the Champions League has now been made where Roma in the first knockout round of the UEFA Champions League are going to take on oh no seriously Manchester City in the last 16, the first leg will be at home in Italy at the Stadio Olimpico. The second leg away at the Etihad Stadium. Oh, dear, oh, dear, dear, oh, dear, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Manchester City in the last 16. Again, the first leg will be in Italy. The second leg will be away at the Etihad Stadium. And right before that second leg as well, three days prior to that second leg, you see the calendar here of when the game is going to be played, in the early stages of March, we'll be taking on Juventus. So we've got Juventus away from home. And then three days later, we travel to Manchester to take on Pep Guardiola's boys, who, as we know, have won the Premier League title three times in the past four seasons. Oh, man, of all the teams to face, we've got Manchester City. You know, I was thinking when we joined Roma, well, thank God for that. We don't have to face Chelsea or Man City ever again. Can't believe it. First season, we've got Chelsea in the group stages. Make it out of that. And we've got Man City. We have not got the luck, have we, in the Champions League? My goodness. But uh, yeah, Man City across two legs. We're expected to reach the final of the Champions League in our first season, don't forget. I'll tell you this right now, we'll be the underdogs heading into that game. Despite spending almost £400 million, they've got the better team. We'll be the underdogs and there'll be a serious chance we'll be getting knocked out in the first round of the knockout stages. And the Roma board will not be happy with that after all the money we have spent. So for our third and final game of today's episode, on the back of that heartbreak, it was really nice to see this in the game here against Udinese, away from home in the final game of the calendar year before the January transfer window opens. Ricardo Orsolini continuing his absolutely fantastic start to the season, bagging his fifth goal, I believe. Uh, sorry, fourth goal even in the Serie A this year, getting on the end of Zaniolo through ball and finessing at home and making it 1-0. But just past the hour mark, speak of the devil, Ricardo gets tripped up, taken down and stayed down as well. An injury for our number 11. Thankfully, he soldiered on and played through the pain and did see out the game as well, and I'm glad he did. He scored our first goal and set up our second as well. Even when hobbling on one leg, this guy is still our most creative player. I absolutely love him. Rolls it through to Ivan Tony, and whilst he did fire a blank in the last game against uh, against the uh, against the uh, against the boys uh, Cagliari, Ivan Tony smacks it in and makes it 2-0. Lovely little offload by Orsolini 
Martini there. Quick one-two between the pair. And as Ivan finds the roof of the net, that's his 15th goal in the Serie A. As he's going for that golden boot, makes it 2-0 and ensures we once again win by the same scoreline. So great way to end the calendar year there. Back-to-back -back wins by the same scoreline and back-to-back -back clean sheets. Well, I believe that's now four clean sheets in our last five games. Really nice to see. 2-0 the final score. Very good win. But unfortunately, as you see by the league table, despite the three points and the man that was displayed by Orsolini, he has got the injury. We'll see how bad it is in the very next episode. And it means heading into January, 22 games to go. We're still in fourth. We've cut the gap on four points to league leaders into Milan, but we're still in fourth place. Can't break into the top three, but we are now starting to see separation between the top four and the rest of the teams as well. Still undefeated since match day two. On a good run right now, but still in fourth place. But I want to say subscribe to the career mode, guys. So big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of Korean very soon, where the January transfer window will open.